Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are consuming this broadcast. Welcome to Ionisms, a simple straight talk, slow burn podcast about movies, pets, cricket and a little bit of geopolitics. In today's episode, I am going to talk about an episode from the podcast coming from Pakistan, which talks about India. Clearly, you have to give it to them. They have a brilliant headliner. Modi's India won't last is clearly to catch a lot of eyeballs. So kudos for a clickbait title. Uh, the podcast from which this episode is coming from is called the Pakistan Experience. They do a fairly good job. I've seen some of the videos uh, before and they come up with a little bit of critical thinking about or introspection about how Pakistan is being run, which is absolutely fine. We have no such thing to comment on that. But this particular episode, which was uh, referring to India, and it had on, on Prima Facie, some of the content had a lot of assumptions and they're entitled to their assumptions fair. But also I thought it would be a good exchange to, um, to present a counter point of view and very rarely there are instances where you know we can get together on the same platform without fighting without arguing without being rhetorical or jingoistic about it and i thought it'd be a good commentary to you know interject some of the assumptions that are here and then share my point of view clearly i have no political affiliations or anything i'm just a regular you know, guy on the in, in India, and I respond to this fr from information that is largely available online on public domain. So it's how the regular folk think. Most of the regular poor folk think, right? So in this video, it's about a ten-minute odd video, but the commentary, uh, the questions between these two uh, gentlemen, will I, I will interject in between and give you some sense on what the regular folk think on the other side and see if that uh, makes sense to you. So let's jump right into this uh, episode. The last 10 years ka jo up, up economic upliftment ka tangible experience logo ka hua hai, whether that be roads, whether that be through UPI, UPI, the Buzair, we the podcast, pe, India mein sab ne comment kiya ke mein cash rakha nahi chhod hai. Mm. France ab import kar rahe. France bolo bhe aage apna UPI system jo hai. हमारे यहाँ लगा दो तो वो डिजिटल इंडिया इकोनॉमिक एक्सपीरियंस आपका अपना यू सी दिस प्रोग्रेस यू सी अंबानी जी हो अच्छा जी डेटा हमारे इतना फ्री हो गया यू सी क्या आई पी एल इतना बड़ा हो गया साथ ही साथ यू ऑल्सो गेट द प्राउड टू बी हिंदू एंड देन यू गेट द प्रोपागेंडा कि जी सबसे पहले एयरप्लेन भी हमने बनाया hmm. सबसे पहले हर चीज दुनिया में जो इन्वेंट हुई सबसे पहले हमने ही बनाई स्पेसिप चलती थी आज से सब कुछ मिक्स हो गया सब कुछ तो वाई डू थिंक कि ये लास्ट नहीं करेगा ये बड़ा एक टेम्प्ररी सा फ्यूजन है इन सब चीज सब मी पॉज देयर बिफोर वी हियर द रिस्पॉन्स लेट मी सेट सम लेट मी ब्रेक डाउन यू नो सेगमेंट बाय सेगमेंट फॉर द ओपनिंग रिमार्क्स द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द कॉमेंट्री वॉज अराउंड डिजिटल डिजिटल इंडिया यूजिंग क्यू आर कोड्स यू पी आई पेमेंट्स इंटरफेस वेयर वी are carrying less cash than what we used to earlier. So give you an example. Back in 2015, I would probably carry about 3000 rupees in, in, in my wallet average. I'm like, uh, not, not always, but in, in most occasions. Today, I don't carry more than 300. And so that's the difference in say four and, uh, you know, four, eight years or nine years, right? So we are carrying less cash. It is very convenient and of course all the, you know, the back and forth about I don't have change. Okay, can you give me more, uh, you know, return the balance and all the, all those conversations are uh, a thing of the past and it's not that the country isn't using uh, cash, it is. For example, the, the benefit that has happened to um, uh, with the advent of the digital interface is the folks who had black money, abundance of black money, they kind of now have nowhere to hide that money. So the more money is being accountable, visible, very difficult to you know stack up your cupboard and then go buy a car you know, because you will need identification. You will need 
wherever you pay, if you pay a lump sum cash that is traced, tracked. It's a good thing, I imagine, that, you know, people, if you can justify the source of income, then you can buy whatever, right? So that nobody is asking you not to buy. They are asking you to show the source of income, which is a fair thing. So fair and accurate opening uh, assessment there. Yes, India is using more of digital currency than, um, I would say more, but more as compared to, say, five, seven years earlier. The second part about how India has grown, uh, data is cheap, is also accurate. It's given the fact that you have 1.4 billion people, I think almost 60% uh, have internet in some shape, size or form. So data being cheap doesn't really matter simply because the ways of earning revenue are multifold. So people get to earn money. I mean, uh, the OEM, the service providers, the uh, value added services, they make their monies like that. The third part, of course, is where the discrepancy lies is like along with that comes, I'm proud to be Hindu. Well, first up, just there's nothing wrong to be proud to be a Hindu. Uh, but before that, I think if you did a general sentiment analysis across the length and breadth of the country, I, I would still like to believe that uh, people identify as India first and then whether I'm a Hindu, Muslim, Sikh or Christian. So the average Indian is, identifies as being Indian first. And so proud to be Hindu is a, a good sentiment. It's not necessarily a bad sentiment. If you can be a proud Muslim in Pakistan, we can be proud Hindus in India and they can be proud Muslims in India because they're Indians first, right? So nothing wrong with that. And the last part was about then creating airplanes and spaceships. Well, at a simplistic level, it's forget the scholars or the scientists or the archaeological survey. I defer you to some of the research that is being done by Indologists worldwide, many in Europe, many in the United States, in many uh, premier institutions and universities, where they will tell you about the archaeological slash scientific evidence of some of these um, inventions. Like uh, if you go back, in, in fact, even on a lighter note, if you go check out the History Channel, there is a section on Vimana's Indian uh, ancient aircrafts. See, at, at a common sense level, a civilization that existed upwards of 5,000 years, considered to be more advanced and intelligent society by scholars who traveled, by travelers who crossed the region, in their documentation have mentioned their first impressions about what what they saw when they first came into India. So reference some of that context and you will find that, well, there must be something without which they wouldn't have referenced it, right? So the whole region was developed, uh, you, you know, on a sociological, on a, uh, on a economical level as compared to some of the other parts of the world back in the day. And you have probably, uh, you will probably know this one, Mohenjo-Daro was a very evolved society, right, uh, for its time, Bronze Age or Iron Age, if, I'm, uh, if, I, if my memory serves me correct, I might be wrong on that, but around that time, e even then, it was a fairly well-developed ecosystem, is, is what the point is. And so, it is not outrageous for the average folk to believe that there could have been some advanced uh, developments and technologies, be it Aryabhatta, be it uh, some of in, in, in the medical science, be it in uh, some of the uh, tools and everything. There's lots of evidence to prove it, right? And so at a regular everyday level, it's not that we obsess about it. It's not that we talk about it. It's not like, oh my God, I lose my sleep about it if it is not. And so we we are okay with it. We we respect the fact that there is adequate information available, and but we don't delve too much into it as well. So just so that you know, this is what the general sentiment is in, in on the probably the feet on street point of view. यार ये मुझे ही वो लगता है ना जैसा कहते हैं जैसा ना मुशर्रफ की कॉनेमी थी इन्फ्लेटेबल बबल जो होता है ये बबल क्रिएट हो जाता है एवरीथिंग एवरीथिंग इज़ फाइट पैसे आ रहे थे ना नीचे से कुछ नहीं था इंडिया ने तो नीचे से अपने इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बना लिया है ना अब किया होगा लेकिन द थिंग इज मुझे लगता है कि दे दे आर आई डोंट नो जापानीज वर्ड क्या होता है हरकारी जो अपने आप को मार देते हैं हरकारी 
Harakiri is the word. Uh, but again, pause there. <laughs> if there is a bubble, well, an economy that's been growing post-1991 is clearly seen, uh, it's, it's become a little more than a bubble. That's fact number one. Fact number two, we have gone through ups and downs on multiple occasions. Take uh, COVID when the economy completely tanked and then the because the economy was strong, it was resilient enough to come back up. Go back to subprime crisis, 2008-2009, when the global sentiment was down. It kind of affected, but not so much. Economy still continued. Go further back, dot-com bust, 99-2000. Again, stuff went down and came up. So I think by now, at least three cycles of hiccups and downturns lead many economists to believe that the economy is strong enough to sustain whatever the jolts, you know, it's the turn of every decade that this kind of, it's a cyclical thing, right? Like a sinusoidal curve. So if there was something in 99, the preceding period, 91 to 99 was a bull run, say from 2002 to 2008 was a good run, 2011 to 19 was a super run. So given that there was another uh, pandemic or a disruption in the economy in 21, 22, say from 23 to 32 or 33, that 10 run, ten year run is perhaps going to be a bull run. And then again, if some major stuff happens and there is a disturbance in the uh, economy, I'm saying disturbance in the force. Uh, so uh, yeah, but by then the economy would have grown little more. And, and so there would have been that much more um, resilience built into the economy for it to sustain that uh, sustain that threat or hiccup as it were. So it, it's perfectly normal for economies to go up and down, but the overall trajectory is on the rise. A great testimony is uh, check out the Sensex, right? Go into the Bombay Stock Exchange, see how the sentiment has gone over the last six months, one year, what have you. And that's the biggest testimony, right? How is the ground level story shaping up economically, right? Forget the report, see where the money is. And so it seems to be in, in very good shape. Very serious issues in society mm -hmm. by creating hatreds between groups. Because if you look at this, look, in whole India, now South India is a place. Pause. South India is not a place. I mean, people, Indian people living in the southern states indian people living in the southern states indian people living in the northern states there are lots of people who are traditionally from north india live work in south of india a lot of uh, people born in the south live and work in the north of india as is the case with east and west lots of uh, people from the eastern or northeastern part of india work in the north work in the south, work in the west. See, that is the whole thing. You have to realize that India is 28 states, 1.4 billion people. There is cross-pollination. There is intermingling of societies. There is this amalgamation of diversity under one platform of unity. And so it is not uncommon for a mix of crowds in concentrated in the metropolises, right? So think of Bangalore, think of Mumbai, think of uh, Delhi, think of Kolkata and Chennai. These hubs, not just these hubs, now if you go to even, you know, hub minus one, the areas around those hubs, see a very healthy mix of people from all over the country. Done very well, yeah. politically, economically, wagaira, wagaira. they don't vote for Modi. Mm. Ah. They don't see him as the, as the guy who's given us to do it. They said, we they don't vote for Bodhi. South never votes for Hindu nationalism. They are Hindus as well. Left that. Not entirely wrong, but not entirely right as well. I mean, if sentiments or exit polls are to be believed, you probably get to know in a few days' time. Even in states like Kerala, which have traditionally not voted, it's nothing to do with Modi. It's their ideology, right? If you remember, go back to uh, Bengal or West Bengal at the time, as it was known as, there was the Communist Party, which ruled for almost 
four or five consecutive terms. So, you know, that was the nature of society in that part of the country, as is the part, uh, as is the nature um, in, in the south, uh, southern region or the southern states. But even in the southern states, there has been uh, a BJP-led government, there have been Congress-led government. So it has been uh, mixed back, but given that it has been little pro non bjp governments that that's a fair thing but it's nothing to do with a particular individual just so that you know it is to do with largely the demographics the ideologies that form the the fabric of the region left hai lekin ma agar aap unse milenge bina yaar they're really hard working people hmm. very enterprising people very friendly people and where and some of them are very religious as well lekin hinduism ko hum monolithic religion dekh lete hain as 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 modi does hinduism is not that in fact 16th century tak to hinduism ko as a religion mana hi nahi jata tha we were also called hindu the muslims were also anyway, called hindus. anybody of this yeah I, I mean, this is funny interesting right i mean are you saying that people living and working in the north of india are not as polite are not as hard working that's not true right i mean people in north of india are equally hard working as are the people of south of india who live in the southern part of india or eastern part of india or the western part of india in india in a developing economy suffice to say there isn't a scope to not work hard right suffice to say that regarding politeness it's a individual thing but as a society we we are generally more polite everywhere yes there is a level of aggression which is seen every now and then uh, in the streets in the in the social media in in various other platforms but again to paint the entire society like that would not be a fair assessment but uh, the bigger part here is there isn't uh, a discrepancy in um, in the country where people believe you know wherever you know it's it's on merit is all i'm trying to say that if there is a job then everybody from the country is eligible to apply for that role wherever that role is based so people don't say oh you are from north so i will not hire you if you are from south i'll not hire you it's not like that so let's hear him yeah anybody in the region basically and then it became a word for anybody who wasn't uh, uh, monolithic ha when you take ye to 18th century 19th century se basically ga game shuru hua Again, Hinduism is a way of life as it was back then, before 16th century, as it is now. I think selective understanding of Hinduism is not a bright idea. Uh, it's not a hard line, prescriptive. If you don't do this, or if you do this, or else, it's not like that. And, and hence, it is. It's a very peaceful um, way of life that is being followed. of course there are fringe elements there are rogue elements as is the case anywhere in the world right and coming from again it's very it's, it would be cliche for me to point out what's happening in pakistan but um if in india there there are better chances more chances that you will find peaceful societies coexisting than what you get to see on social media on news channels or whatever which largely rely on sensationalism uh because of the trp ratings ye hindu nationalism ka jo hai is 19th century 19th century se all nationalism i would say anywhere in the world especially in this region shuru hua so mujhe ye nahi samajh aati theek hai aap vote ke liye kar rahe but agar aapki foundation ya aapko vote isliye mil raha hai ki economic <laughs> prosperity nahi ho rahi vote isliye mil raha hai because you hate muslims hold on economic prosperity nahi ho rahi hai basis what i mean that is a completely unfounded assumption economic prosperity ho rahi hai it is there i mean look at where uh, sensex was in 2010 where it was in 2015 where it is in 2024 where it was in 2005 so economy has steadily grown it has come to the fifth largest economy in few years it will be the third largest economy globally so are you saying that there isn't progress is it is it enough no it is not enough is it uh, all wall to wall no it is not in capitalism by definition the haves and the have nots the distance is increasing 
but there are policies there are measures in place to counter the underprivileged is it adequate no it is not adequate but at least the policies are there a lot of it is being followed the country is not imploding if if this were to be the case then the country would implode that doesn't seem to be the case right so please understand when you make these assumptions that everything is based on hatred if you're doing really well there's nothing to be based on hatred as much as you would like to believe the fact is the fundamental i think the sentiment is that today's let's say indian or today's in india is little more assertive than what it was say in the his, in the historical past recent past so take cricket for example right pakistan cricket team was always the bad boys of cricket you know they were the aggressive which was also known as they had the killer instinct go getter you know for lack of a better expression now uh, and in indians back then were the nice boys of and i'm talking the men's cricket team of course they're, they're you know the nice guys of cricket and people will come and sledge you and i'll show you where the boundary is i'll hit you there again you know what i'm talking about and then kind of changed somewhere there right and i said let me show you back and that's something which is not palatable to many people when people are standing up in it and saying well let me give it back to you or uh, if you go from this is from an indian being more assertive standpoint and so within that ambit there are hindus who are more assertive they have you know predominantly in the past or historically been you know the folks who have been either been invaded or been given uh, you know lectures on how to lead their life or been oppressed now if if they are now evolving into being little more assertive about their own identity and personality nothing wrong with that i can also assure you the muslim in today the indian muslim of today is also more assertive than what they were earlier right? so india as a country has become little more assertive nothing wrong with that that being said does it mean that there aren't those who have tipped over to the other side becoming become you know radicalized or have uh, you know the rogue elements 1.4 billion people there are bound to be few uh, cases which have gone on the other side and you know have a different point of view i wouldn't deny that there are lot of things that we are very proud of and we are also mature enough as a society to say that there are lot of things that we are not proud of and so is there a collective consciousness uh, to do something about it i think so or you don't like christians then there's something seriously inherently wrong with that society again i have to pause again and again because i have to break down each of these questions each of each of these assumptions we celebrate christmas like how uh, from 25th of december through 31st of december you should be in india to see the festivities that go the businesses imagine those businesses which have a year ending on 31st of december you know it's like they are i mean there are those who if there is a b2c of course their business goes off the charts and sometimes b2b business slows down because it's a holiday season so everybody is in a festive mood and celebrating we at the regular workplace have uh, holidays for uh, easter good friday right if it falls on a weekday it's a holiday additionally for all other religions we celebrate eid there is holiday there is a national holiday then there is if there are regional holidays even that is permitted in fact some of the businesses often uh, cite the example that there are more holidays there are like 13 holidays in 12 months like metaphorically speaking that there are more holidays than the working days which is to respect the diversity that the land brings right with all the melting pot of multiple cultures so everybody has got a space and people celebrate i have celebrated eid i celebrate christmas as much i love diwali i love uh, durga puja i love everything that happens and uh, unlike in pakistan where holi was not being allowed right so it's again i won't get into that compare it's your country what you do is it's your business but in our country there is no such discrimination of anybody celebrating anything in fact very recently the ramzan period that uh, finished and um, uh, during the course of eid the streets were packed jammed and not just traditional muslims but non muslims also part uh, you know participated there were uh, food stalls there was it was like a like a mela like a you know carnival atmosphere in many parts of the city so to say that 
we do not celebrate one or do not appreciate one religion over the other it's not the right assumption or in that electorate which votes for modi and it will backfire because khuda na khasta aage ja ke koi depression aa jata hai economic slump aata hai cycles hoti hai economy ki theek hai na phir inki phir jo 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 jinke paas tha ab middle class ke to ye dar lagta hai ki main idhar pahuncha hu main to niche gir jaunga jab wo uske feel hona lag jaye usko ki yaar ye mera next stage mein wahan pe niche aa jaunga to kya karega then he will back back on these fascist ideas of hindu nationalism then phir seriously i mean like i think i i will not belabor the point the economy has gone through multiple ups and downs and it still holds and it's a good sign so people have not reverted to any fascism or any extremism to the best of uh, my knowledge and like i said before uh, in a country of 1.4 billion people there are bound to be rogue elements and like many other countries where there are rogue elements and some part of the country probably has good people so pe jayega phir usse wo apna wo rosa hota rahega phir wo apni other create kar lega muslim mein jab hum bhi create kiya tha na humne abdiyon ko create kiya phir humne shiyon ko create kiya ek other hona chahiye ki apna gussa nikalu main to ye it's a very pakistani perspective of viewing geopolitics of the region right that's probably ha- what has happened in pakistan where there has been internal fighting between communities and all that so the, the view is that if it has happened to us it will also happen to india where there are so many communities well that is not the case yes there are differences yes uh, there are there's diversity but that's also the fascinating part of india that despite all that there are enough examples where diverse communities have coexisted for centuries for years for eons together and continue to do so ha to mujhe ye lagta hai india mein ye hone wala hai aur ye hua hai bahut sari nation states mein hua hai jab ne aapne ek particular ideology create ki which requires the other or or an opposite to hate no yaar hitler in germany ne bhi aisa shoot up kiya tha कहाँ थे कहाँ उठा दिया था हिटलर ने उनको विद इन अबाउट फाइव सिक्स ईयर्स इंडिया जर्मनी बिकेम सच अ पावरफुल नेशन आफ्टर बैडली लूजिंग फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर बट आइडियोलॉजी पर वेरी मेस्ट ऑफ एनालिसिस टेल यू वाई यू नो द वर्ल्ड विच लेट्स टेक द पीरियड बिटवीन नाइनटीन टू थर्टी नाइन थर्टी नाइन दैट वॉज द पीरियड वेन the nazi party galvanized the momentum to reach wherever it reached right you have to realize how society was back then has no bearing to what society is now so the years say 2021 uh, to 2025 have no bearing of of 1935 to 1939 because the world, second world war started after that why because there is no internet why because the society is more interconnected interdependent than what they were before it's more aware more informed think of some of the instances like your entire history books are um, have wrong information factual wrong information as a matter of minute state policy right where you have given wrong information of all the regional geopolitics and everything so what happens with this right as long as people were within pakistan they were they grew up and that's why they have this the animosity towards india even small children look at some of the reaction videos like ye hamara dushman mulk hai is a very common sentiment right now when the same pakistanis travel outside the state of pakistan and go to uh, other countries other regions and they are you know hit with the reality that oh my god i was i, I feel like a m- mushroom here like kept in the dark and fed with bs where suddenly you realize that this is not the reality that i was taught and if the, the same people many of them don't want to go back but if, when they do and they narrate that story back to the uh, regular populace they're like oh, this guy is now changed you know and that that person risks being ostracized or like oh my god this why is he now praising india there's so many reaction channels which spend copious amounts of bandwidth in praising every darn thing that is happening in india which sometimes even comes to us as a news like oh my god this this did this really happen <laughs> you know that kinds 
So you have to realize that there was no internet back then. There is no interdependency. There is no connectivity. People to people interactions was low. Understanding of counter cultures was very low. So what probably Hitler was able to achieve is not replicable in practical terms in these years. Right in the no matter yes you have a power of the social media you have this you have that but replicating ignorance of 1935 to 39 to the awareness in contrast in these years it's a huge battle to climb so in India as per your own admission if the southern states don't vote for Modi that is a healthy sign that is a healthy sign because there is enough room platform uh, forums for people to think against think uh, critically and agree to disagree and move on right and and or get what they want so on so you are contradicting yourself by saying that if the, if there was no diversity of opinion then there would have been a near uh, you know they would have banned all parties and said this is only one party your best friends think of china what do they do right is is there an opposition party there no so but you don't have a problem with that you have a problem here, right? Where there is an opposition party. If there is one, there is a problem. And if there isn't one, then there is a problem. If somebody is winning by a landslide majority, then you have a problem. If they don't, then also you have a problem. Point is, has any government been perfect? Answer is no. Has Mr. Modi's government been perfect? No. Has the previous government been perfect? No. But what they have made India, where it stands today, it is far better and I'm looking at a macroeconomic level at a zoomed out level where where it was in say 1995 to where it is in 2025. There is a remarkable degree of change. The world has sat up and taken notice of this change. Hence the FDIs, hence the investments, right? People are not stupid, right? If they don't see a robustness of economy, society, a roadmap ahead, they will, nothing, nobody can force them to invest their money in this country. So use some common sense there, right? So very important to realize nobody is perfect. The present government is also not perfect. There are areas of improvement. Of course, things can be better. It is incredibly difficult to run a 1.4 billion people country democratically. Keep that in mind created a society which became numb against violence, which said, which, which, but as long as economy is doing well, they didn't care that if someone was killing Jews, they were killing Jews, they were killing Jews, okay? It was support. It was good. It was so much support. If there was no foreign intervention, Germany didn't have full Europe control. It's not like... Inherently to nahi karna tha Germany ne mere khayal se foreign intervention se keh raha hai to mera ye kehna hai ki why would you create a society like that because aapke dimag mein hota you want to remain in power hmm aapne logon ko bagar dikha diye bagh bana bhi diye aur wo log jo hai chand log lekin wo un bagh pe sirf chand logon ko ijazat hai aane ki because aap pata hai ki sabko laya to aapka political power rahega you need to keep creating enemies ताकि लोगों को आप बताते रहें कि वाय जस्टिफाई करते रहें अपनी प्रेजेंस कि यू आर हेयर बिकॉज ओनली यू कैन डिफेंड फ्रॉम दीज वर्मन्स अराउंड यू हु आर ऑलवेज आपसे जेलस हो रहे हैं जब आपका इकोनॉमिक पावर ले लेंगे डज दैट साउंड वेरी फेमिलियर इज दैट वॉट it's not happening in Pakistan, <laughs> but again, I'll leave that to you for you to figure out. Uh, it's counterintuitive as a logic. If you're doing well, you don't need to be fearful of anyone. It's when you're not doing well is when you try to play the blame game. So if the country is doing well. People are coming in with investments. The economy is growing. People are making more money than they did before. I don't think there is any reason to feel envious, jealous of anything else. And Largely, we don't. Yeah, in this country, there are uh, enough uh, resources available where people can make money, can uh, have a better life. Is it easy? No, it is not easy. It is incredibly difficult to compete because you're uh, you're talking about you know the top talent that there is. Think of jobs. 
right? For one job, there are probably 700 applicants or 1000 applicants and each of them, you know, the, the compression is such that the top 15, top 30 are, you know, the creme de la creme, but there's only one job. So the pressure is very high in the system. There is a burnout because of that pressure. But the fact is in a capitalistic economy, there will always be this race where the you have to be the best to get to the top. So in India, it's just happening, right? That I have made a shining India. This is Muslim, and this is Pakistani, and this is Christian, and this is Congress, and this is secular. This is jealous. This is jealous. This is jealous. This is jealous. This is India. But in the economy, it's not going to happen. But एक तो I don't understand why would Pakistan want to take India. I mean, just let's hypothetically think about it. Do you have the necessary wherewithal to run a country? Otherwise, you would have run your country a little better than what it is being run. Right? Fact number one. Fact number two. We keep talking about Kashmir. If you, Kashmir does come to Pakistan, will you be able to govern it, run it? Unlikely. And then you're talking about a country which is twice or thrice or maybe I don't know how many times bigger in landmass in people. So if you have no governance maturity to run such a big complex, uh, you know, state of the union, as it were, then it's unlikely that you should even attempt to do that. That being said, the flip side of it is also true. India has no intention, no um, I mean, no interest in taking over Pakistan. Like, but why? For what joy? Basis what? Even when Pakistan was arguably doing well, that too, it was on borrowed money, right? It's not like there are 35,000 oil wells there that, okay, let's invade for oil. No, it's not that there are gold mines which will completely... So there is no one such resource that Pakistan has today that has a big catalyzing impact in the country that, oh my, this is a game changer. If we have this, this is a game changer. Think about it. If that isn't the case, why would India want to, in their sanest minds, do anything, have to do anything with Pakistan? I think in one such interview, Mr. Modi said, um, and, and I echo that sentiment, you do well. I mean, and that's a sentiment from the feet on the street. We have become so distant in some sense that we don't even wish ill for you. You know, we are like, yeah, you get, it's your country, you deal with it. You get, if you do well, good on you. You go on to win an Oscar, good on to you, good for you. If you win the Cricket World Cup, good for you. I don't necessarily feel bad about it, right? Uh, even if you beat India in the World Cup, I, I won't necessarily feel bad about it. Yeah, of course, as a sports person, I love my cricket team. But... The point is, our trajectory is different from your trajectory, not just trajectory, the direction itself has changed, right? So the society is maturing, the society is developing. So if you keep on doing selective outrage over selective sens sensationalism that is available on some of the news channels or even some of us don't watch the news channels or some of us who do, we discount a healthy percentage of it. I, I can give that to you. We don't buy some of those stories. There is enough sane brains in the country which are, which are articulating what actually is happening. And like I've said this at least thrice before, it's not that everything is running perfectly, but it is far better than what it used to be. And there is room for improvement. And we are, as regular folk, making noise about it, protesting about it where required and... We have our problems and we'll deal with them. We'll solve it. We don't need you to feel apprehensive, uh, exhausted or, you know, worried. It doesn't concern you. So why are you worried about it? Economy is Islam. It's a little bit like that in India. It's a serious Islam. And the middle class feels like it's going to be in our hands. The influence. So what will they do? Hindu nationalism. Then they will fall. तो मसले में साइड शुरू हो जाएंगे तो इसमें इंडिया में अगर आप इस पे क्रिटिकल हो रहे हैं अर्दोगान ने भी यही नहीं किया उसकी तो फिर आप तारीफ ही कर रहे हैं मैं तो बिल्कुल तारीफ नहीं कर रहा एज एन यू आर सेइंग दैट दैट अर्दोगान मॉडल कुड वर्क टुवर्ड्स गेनिंग सिविलियन स्पेस इन पाकिस्तान अगेंस्ट द वो मैं एक कॉन्टेक्स्ट में बात कर रहा था पहले 
मैं ये कॉन्टेक्ट कर रहा था कि अगर आप इकोनॉमिक कर लेते हैं सक्सीड कर जाए दैट इज दी टाइम मिलिट्री विल प्रिसीड कि आप इतनी इकोनॉमिक करें उसमें भी तकरीबन दस पंद्रह साल लग गए इसको अब तो ठीक है वो तो लगने थे पता नहीं कितनी फीसद चल रही है आजकल इन्फ्लेशन सत्तर फीसद पर नहीं कितनी फीसद चल रही है फिर भी अभी हम हार भी क्या हम अभी हारा भी है ना इसलिए अभी लोकल इलेक्शन कहाँ अभी जब टर्की में नहीं नहीं बुरी तरह हारे थे लॉस्ट उनका वही हाल हुआ है जो था क्या इकोनॉमिक प्रोस्पेरिटी क्या हो रही थी धमाके पैसा आ रहा था अमरीका ने बिलियन डॉलर दे रहा था सऊदी अरेबिया से पैसा आ रहा था चाइना था सबको रूस को खत्म करने के चक्करों में सबने हमें पैसा दिया हमारे पेट वो सोसाइटी में पैसा फैल गया ठीक है मजे आ गए लोगों के वो गया तो पीछे क्या रह गया तालिबान से पैसा पा ये चीजें रह गई बिल्कुल ये कहां जाएंगी इंडिया में भी यही होने वाला है वंस नीचे डाउनफॉल है उनका आया ठीक है उनकी इकोनॉमी बहुत स्ट्रांग है इंटरनल उनकी ऑर्गेनिक ग्रोथ होती है लेकिन यार ऊंच नीच आएगी तो वहां पीछे पे ये आर एस एस वाले जो होंगे किसको मत फिर ये हरकतें करते हैं वो अभी से करते हैं उनको कहा जाता है ये तुम्हारा इतना ये हमारे इंडिया को तबाह करने आ गए हैं घुसपेटी है हाँ घुसपेटी आ गए घुसपेटी आ गए हमने भी तो ये किया अफगान अफगान रेफ्यूजी को उठा के तेज देखा और मुस्लिम है ये लोग आ गए तो उन्होंने क्या करना है मेरे नान वाले को उठा लिया यार बताए देखो नहीं फिर आपको ढूंढना पड़ता है ना पंचिंग बैग अपना गुस्सा कहीं तो निकाले एनी हो आई थिंक यू गेट द यू गेट द सेंटिमेंट राइट यू गेट दैट द होल जिस्ट ऑफ द स्टोरी एंड एंड आई थिंक वी आर ट्राइंग टू से इज वी आर माइंडिंग आर ओन बिजनेस एंड वील कंटिन्यू टू डू दैट यू माइंड योर ओन बिजनेस एंड फिक्स योर ओन प्रॉब्लम्स आई थिंक वी डोंट नीड टू लव इच अदर एज लॉन्ग एज वी को एग्जिस्ट पीसफुली एंड एज फार एज कॉन्वर्जेशन अराउंड कश्मीर एंड ऑल दोज थिंग्स कम अराउंड दैन इट्स इट्स वेयर इट्स पार्टी इंडिपेंडेंट राइट इट्स पार्टी इंडिपेंडेंट इज टमोरो इफ देर इज नो मोदी गवर्नमेंट इफ देर इज अ कांग्रेस लेड गवर्नमेंट दैट स्टैंड्स इन चेंजिंग इफ यू आर थिंकिंग आर्टिकल थ्री सेवेंटी और एनीथिंग विल बी यू नो गो बैक टू स्टेटस को एंटी दैट is a foregone conclusion and and i'm saying it from a regular you know feet on street standpoint right there's an overwhelming uh, acceptance agreement and and we can see the development in fact i can tell you that at least in my circle um, there are more people who have visited uh, kashmir this year alone than they have ever done in the previous past like more significantly more suppose four or five families went back in say uh, five years 10 years earlier now at least i know of uh, 15 20 or 30 families just as a one individual i'm saying right in my sphere of influence um and that also said there are enough m- new mosques that are being built in the area that i live there are at least 12 to 13 mosques there are at least 12 to 13 temples there are at least four or five churches there are there is a synagogue there there is everything that is uh coexisting so for you to believe that this is not working is a bit rich right and so i appreciate dialogue and i appreciate your concern about india but please 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 base it on facts base it on reality check base it on uh, whatever research and i might not be the best guy to give you all the detailed research but there are enough uh, data points available online uh, for you to uh, to make some commentary on well that's all i have time for this episode i hope uh, listeners got a chance to hear both sides of the story as it were and if uh, folks in pakistan or um, mr shahzad or uh, the pakistan experience team listens to this please understand that the idea was not to have any jingoistic nationalistic rhetorical uh, ye kar denge wo kar denge kind of a you know uh, uh, response but a factual objective from a everyday local person standpoint right uh, so that you know that it's not always politically motivated or driven but sometimes as a regular citizen we feel very aligned to the same Until we meet the next time stay well stay safe this is your host Ian and you are listening to Ianisms